Okay, start broadcast. Okay, we're up. Okay, we're up. We're up. <coughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Wednesday night service. And uh, one of the things that we like to try to do uh, is uh, uh, the Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer. Effectual, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but fervent just means hot. I've seen him hot. I've seen him out there when people are acting stupid and he gets hot. I, I've seen, uh, you know, I've seen some of y'all get hot. And there's sometimes nothing wrong with that. <laughs> sometimes it's justified, sometimes it's not. But that's what it means when the Bible says fervent, it means hot. And, of course, in the Lord's work, that means being hot to work for the Lord, hot to please the Lord. And so it says the effectual, put that word aside a minute, that's word first, fervent, and that's hot. And then prayer. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous woman or man availeth much. It means it accomplishes a lot. So we need to be hot about things. Uh, I was told just a little while ago, for example, uh, Brother Apache came in and I was busy and, you know, getting close to church time. And he said, Pastor, there's some people over there. Old Apache was hot, man. He was hot about the fact that there was people over there bringing a lot of good food. The Carpenters Union brought a lot. And I'm talking about good food, good food. And it really is. And y'all going to enjoy it. There's everything in there from burritos to rice and all kinds of good stuff. And it's all fresh stuff. It ain't junk, okay? It's good stuff. But old Apache was hot. Oh, preacher, you, you, you got to see what they brought. I said, where are they? They still here? He said, yeah, yeah. I said, well, and then I got hot. I said, I got to go talk to them people. And I forgot about what time it was. I said, if people are going out of their way to bring food to us, we need to get hot about that. So I got hot and I got over there. And I put them on television. So they're going to be on TV all over the world now. And they're going to say, golly. <laughs> and, uh, but, but I say all of that to say we need to get hot. Now, we can get hot about the wrong thing sometimes. You know, and we need to pray about that too. But it says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much. And the way we get hot about it is uh, we let other people know that we're alive. And some of y'all don't that the rest of them here are alive. You know how I know you don't think they're alive or you don't know that they're alive? Because you don't know their name. Now, I've got an excuse. I'm 73 years old. And if I can't remember Charles, <laughs> that's because I'm old. <laughs> but I usually remember him. Yeah, come on over here, bro. And so tonight, I want y'all to be hot, be effectual in your prayer. And to be effective. Now, what if Apache would have come over and said, uh, uh, Pastor, uh, there, there, there's probably some people over there that, that, that's got, got some food. That wouldn't have been, that would have been dumb. It wouldn't have been hot. And the same thing is true about other things. So right now, over the next few minutes, live all over the world, I'm going to ask you all to get hot. I want you to speak up. For two reasons. Now, I know you're going to get shy. Well, I don't, man, I, I don't care. Get over it. I want you to mention your name loud and hot so people can pray for you. And I'm going to start right here. Speak up. Olivia Harrison. Olivia Harrison. Charles Harrison. Pray for me. All right. Amen. Pizza. 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 Teresa. Teresa. Sherry, I remembered Sherry. Sherry had been working around here all day long. She was hot. She was hot in the sink. She's hot in the toilet. She's hot on the floor. She was hot all over the building today, working hard. James. James. Is that the only name you got? Okay. Brother Richard. Brother Richard. Amen. Holly. You are my brother. Robert. Robert. Stephen. 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 Norman. Norman. Joe. Joe. Rhonda, what's your name? L louder. Richard. All right. Now yours. What? Shanarian. 
Y'all don't, y'all like me, you probably won't remember that. But it took me a while to remember it. And I finally figured out how to say it. Shenarian. Is that right? Am I close? Okay, close enough. All right? Roger. Roger. James. James. Flash. Flash. Roy. Roy. Lionel. Lionel. Enrique. Lorene. And I even said it right. <laughs> I'm always messing up her name. I don't know why. Probably because I'm old. But anyway. Vince. Vince. What? Journey. Spell it for me. All right. Journey then. Okay. All right. Journey. Chris. Chris. George. George. Carlos. Carlos. Jensen. Jensen. Mary. Mary. Let's see. Did we get everybody? Did I miss anybody? All right. Will. Will. How about on the camera? Kevin. Kevin. Anybody else back there? All right, that's it. All right. My name is Wiley. My name, in fact, is Wiley Smead Drake. W-I-L-E-Y S-M-E-A-D Drake. I was born and raised in Magnolia, Arkansas. Way down in the southern part. Of, we were so far south in the southern part of Arkansas, you could smell the bayous in Louisiana. That's how close we were. Now, I say all of that to say, <clears throat> my mama and daddy, for some reason, I don't know why I didn't ask them. When I was a kid, you didn't ask your daddy and mama things like that. <laughs> but anyway, they named me after my two grandfathers. The grandfather on my daddy's side was Wiley. And the grandfather on my mother's side was Smeed. If you go back to that part of the country now, both of them have been dead a long time. But if you go back there and say, do you know Smeed Beasley? Oh, yeah, that's that old man that used to live over in Magnolia. He was a horse trader and a storyteller. His name was Smeed Beasley. And if you go back there now and ask, does anybody know about Wiley? They say, oh, isn't that crazy preacher? No, 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 I'm talking about old man Wiley. <laughs> they say, yeah, he was that old man that run that sawmill up there in Arkansas and helped a lot of people. And um, he, was, uh, he was a storyteller. So, see, I come by it naturally. My grandfather, Wiley, and my grandfather, Smeed, were known for storytelling. And... Um, so, that's how I got my heritage from that. And uh, I say all of that to say, uh, also when I was growing up as a little boy, I had a brother that's nine years older than me. And then mama had me. And my, little, my older brother, nine years older, didn't like that. Because mama would say, you got to take care of your little brother. And he'd say, oh, mama, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to take care of my little brother. He ain't no fun. And I probably wouldn't. But Mama said, no, boy, you take care of your little brother. And so he did. And uh, because he had to do that, he didn't like it, so he didn't complain. But he picked on me a little bit. And I was just a young boy, little, little boy, just learning how to talk. And um, he asked me, what is, your, what is your whole name? And I said, Wiley Peed. And he laughed, went and got his buddies and said, come over here, ask my little brother what his name is. And so they'd say, okay, little brother, what's your name? And I'd say, Wiley Peed, because I couldn't pronounce Smeed. <laughs> and so they'd all laugh, you know, yeah, Wiley Peed, yeah, that's funny, funny, funny. And I didn't think it was very funny. But later I learned how to say Smeed. But for a long time... When I tried to say Smeed, I said Peed. And so my brother had a lot of fun with that. Hey, come here. Come here. I want you to ask my little brother what his name is. And I'd say, okay. What's your name? Wiley Peed. Ah! They'd get a big laugh out of it, you know. So, my mama, being a good mama and wanting to take up for her son, said, y'all don't pick on him. That's your little brother. Don't be picking on your little brother. And uh, they told the other boys there, said, don't, don't pick on him. And so Mama said, I'll tell you what we're going to, we're going to change your name. 
We're not going to call you Wiley Smead anymore because you can't say it. <laughs> We're going to call you W.S. Use initials. And a lot of people in the South did that. Bush was called Dub. And uh, other people used initials. And so they called me W.S. And so for years, I didn't go by Wiley. I went by W.S. I finally learned how to say Smead <laughs> and uh, began to use it a little bit. But that's just a little of the history of, of my name and how I got that name. When I met my wife, she was a pretty sophisticated lady, and I was an old country boy. So what's your name? I said, W.S. And she sort of smiled and said, oh, okay. Is that initials? I said, yeah, W.S. So later I thought, well, I don't, you know, <clears throat> she, she acted like she didn't like that maybe, you know. And so I was in the Navy at the time, and I went up there. In those days, they paid you in cash. You lined up on the ship, and they called your name, and they paid you. And I walked up there one day, and they said, uh, Willie Drake? And I said, no, sir, my name's Wiley. He said, if you want to get paid, it's going to be Willie, because that's what the book says. <laughs> so you're going to be Willie Drake if you want to get paid. And I said, yeah, I want to get paid. So they named me Willie Drake. And, of course, everybody shortened that to Bill. Bill was short for Willie or William. And so then later I told my wife, I said, well, my name really is Bill. And so she started calling me Bill. And so I went by the name Bill. For, in fact, if you look on the church sign, you'll see it says Wiley S. Bill Drake. I was still using you, That's on the sign right out there right now. You look at it when you leave tonight. If it ain't, I'm lying. <laughs> You'll see it there. <clears throat> and so then, my wife and I got married, and we decided to have kids. We had kids. We had two girls, and then we are going to have uh, the third girl, and then we had a boy. Well, I'm typical macho, you know. We're going to have a boy. He's going to have to be named after me. He's going to have to be a junior. Name him Wiley Jr. And Barbara said, well, honey, we don't call you Wiley. <laughs> We call you Bill. I said, well, Wiley is my name, so we're going to call my son Wiley Jr. And she said, that's going to confuse everybody. And that's why we put it up on the sign out there, because we wanted people to know my name was Wiley S. Drake, parentheses, Bill Drake, because there's a lot of people still in this world that know me as Bill Drake. So if you ever hear anybody say, you know a preacher named Bill Drake? I say, yeah, I sure do. <laughs> but his real name's Wiley. So, I say all of that to say the reason I ask you to say your name is because there are people watching all over the world. And a lot of them wrote your name down. When they heard your name, they wrote it down. They didn't write it down for bad reasons. They wrote it down for good reasons. So they could pray for you by name. Because they know I preach at them on the television. And by the way, they say we have 360-something thousand subscribers to this program. Now, I didn't do that, folks. God did. I'd love to be able to say, yeah, that's just me, you know. No, that's God. God did it. And so, uh, I started talking a while ago. <clears throat> These guys showed up here today from the Carpenters Union. Hard-working men, carpenters. Brought a whole bunch of good food. And so I put them on television. I want the whole world to know what these carpenters uh, were doing and what they could do. And so I think they'll have a little fun out of that. And we'll enjoy the food. I'm telling you, boy, it's some good food. And I had a chance to share that William is one of the success stories, Mr. Ruffin. <clears throat> and I also uh, said, in reference to the carpenters, that he's the guy that built, built that shed out there. And he ain't a carpenter. He ain't a licensed carpenter, but he did a good job. And he wanted to honor my dear sweet wife, Barbara, and he said, I want to build a cross for Miss Barbara. And so he did. And he built the other crosses. And I said about him to them tonight, I said, he ain't a carpenter. But he said, I know how to use a hammer. <laughs> and so he built those crosses. That's what God can do if we'll just let him use us and work with us and work through us. And in some kind of cases, 
in my case, even in spite of us, God can still work, okay? And so that's what this church is all about. <clears throat> we have some friends in Washington, D.C. I'm going to be there next week. I'm going to have breakfast with Mr. Trump. I'm going to the presidential inaugural prayer breakfast. I already got my ticket. And I'm going. I already got cleared through Secret Service. <laughs> and that wasn't easy for me because I'm a troublemaker. But uh, I got cleared. I got clearance. And on Monday, I'm going to the airport and fly to D.C. And we're going to be back there for the inaugural prayer breakfast and to share... And I'm going to blow the show for while I'm there, too. And uh, we're going to do a great, I think, a great time together <clears throat> with the Lord Jesus Christ, bragging on Jesus. But there's a group there in D.C. that are helping with it, and they're called the Family Research Council. And they have a motto that says, Faith, Family, and Freedom. Those three things. And they've written that prayer that we pray together. So would you pray this prayer with me that they pray? Bow your heads and pray this prayer after me. And do it out loud. Don't be bashful. Say, I will answer. God's call to fall. <clears throat> On my knees. In humility. And seek his face. In repentance. So that he might forgive. My sin, my sin and heal our land, and heal our land. In, Jesus in Jesus name amen, amen. and that's what we're going to do we're going to be there and we're going to meet with other leaders I think America is making a comeback and I praise God for it not just because of Trump but because of the people that are praying for faith family and freedom and now I'm going to blow the shofar because I said to and when we blow the shofar, that loud sound is to remind us that no matter how silent or loud we pray, God hears our prayer. So would you use your mind and send your prayers to God as I blow the shofar? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the shofar. Thank you that we can indeed pray and love you and know that you love us. For each woman and man and boy and girl here tonight, <clears throat> I pray that you would hear their prayers and answer their prayers. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Bible says that we are to support the work of the Lord. The Lord don't need our money. But the Lord has chosen to use us and use our money. So I want to ask our ushers. Who's ushering tonight? <clears throat> I want to ask our ushers if they'll come and get the offering plates. And uh, they're going to come among you. And uh, you're going to give to the Lord's work here at the church. Whatever the Lord tells you to give, you give. Don't you dare give a penny unless God tells you to. But don't you dare not give if God tells you to. The way we work here is through that offering plate. We don't get any help from anybody else except Carpenters Union and food and all that kind of stuff. But as far as paying the bills, paying the light bills, paying the gas bill, uh, we do that through this offering that we take here in the church. Thank you. Now let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I want to ask Miss Olivia if she'd ask God to bless this offering. Would you please? Our <clears throat> dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for this day you've given us. We ask you to bless this offering to follow your ministry, Lord. Bless those that were scared with those that did give. We say this thing in the most present way. We humbly pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Miss Olivia. And it's good to have Olivia and Charles back here for a little while because they usually are traveling. He has a job that 
dragged him all over the country. And, uh, but we're praying for him and pray for him, them as they're here and pray for their family. Uh, like the rest of us, we all have people scattered everywhere. My kids are all the way coast to coast. I got one daughter in Florida and the others are out here. And uh, so we all have families scattered everywhere. And so let's all agree to pray for our families wherever they are. And uh, we just continue to lift them all up in prayer. And uh, <clears throat> I want to encourage you uh, to be faithful in church. <clears throat> Please continue to be faithful in cooperation. Everybody knows what that is. Some of us act like we don't because we don't cooperate. But we know what it's like. And God's going to bless you or not bless you based on your cooperation level here at the church. And guess what? When I preach at you, I got three fingers pointing back at me. Because I ought to preach the same thing. As the Lord blesses me and I bless him, we will work together and share together. Cooperation-wise, money-wise, all that we do together. So please continue to give to the Lord's work. Uh, please continue to do whatever you can. And uh, for those of you that... Uh, that work here and, and do cleaning and there are times when we need cleaning supplies and so forth and if you buy them you come see me we'll reimburse you for what you have to buy and uh, we just thank the Lord for what he's doing and ask that God would continue to bless us we want you to pray for the city the city is rearing their ugly head again we got a letter from them that they're going to want us to yada 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 you know but that's okay we're going to fight it and on the 24th, they wanted us to have a meeting with them to check and see what this needed to be done, that needed to be done. And so when they sent me that, they said, we want to get together for a meeting. And I said, I'm going to D.C. to meet with the president. Y'all want to meet with me? Wait till I meet with the president. And so I told them, I'll be back the 24th. And so I ain't meeting with them until I meet with Mr. Trump. And I'm going to ask Mr. Trump, how can I get the city off my back? He may not answer it, but that's okay. I'm going to tell the city I asked him that. And interestingly enough, <clears throat> a year ago, they give us that same letter. In fact, they just resent it now. But a year ago, they gave it. It's all about safety and doors and lights and all that nonsense. But uh, <clears throat> the day after they sent the letter... A drug lab where they manufacture drugs blew up here in Buena Park the day after they gave us that letter. And the, guess where the drug lab was? Right next door to the police department. And I said, what is this? They out there worried about us not locking a door and they got a drug lab being built right next door to the police department. Do your job. Right under their nose. And so this last Friday they gave me that letter again. A year later. The next day I looked out there and there's black smoke boiling up all around. Somebody uh, broke in and set fire to some cars. I don't know if it was another drug lab or not. But I would think if I was a member of the city council I'd say we better watch what we're doing. God dealt with them before. He'll deal with them now. So continue to pray. We've had some people that left here. That left here under strange circumstances. Uh, Brother Peter, pray for him. I don't know what he's up to. He's out, back out in the street. And Brother David Myers, you know, pray for him. And for others that don't like to cooperate. God moves them on in their own time. I'm not picking on those guys. They just need to get right with the Lord. And uh, I don't pull any punches. And so, please, uh, let's all cooperate. Let's work together. Let's pray together. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done here. And, uh, you know, I want to say thank you to Olivia and Charles and others that chip in and pitch in. And Teresa and Sherry and others that are working together and sharing together. And, of course, Mary and, and uh, Lorraine and... And I know I'm leaving a bunch of important people out, and I apologize for that. But God knows. God knows. 
who the workers are. And God will bless you a lot more than I can. And you might get a little accolade because, oh, well, the preacher talked about me. Well, you'll get far more from Jesus, I guarantee you. All right? Yes, sir. All right, come on up. <clears throat> And I'm going to make something clear. It's not, we've been lenient with people in the kitchen. We're, we're doing things now that we, we never did before. We never used to let anybody get personal on that stove, going in there cooking their own personal food. But we've been doing that. But I'm letting you guys know it's a safety issue in there. The safety issue is somebody, I'm not going to point no fingers, and if it don't stop, nobody will be cooking in that kitchen except for who, who's cooking for the day. And they won't, you won't be cooking no personal stuff. People have been frying food in those little pans and putting, and instead of washing them. When you cook your own personal food, wash your own dishes. Yep. Instead of washing them, they've been putting the pans with oil in the oven. I went over there today, there's three pans in the oven that's burnt up with oil in it. And if an oil fire starts, ain't no way we're going to put it out. That's right. And there's always a pilot light on in that oven. So if you leave that in there, it's going to get too hot, and it's going to light in the middle of the night. If you can't wash your own dishes, don't cook on the stove. Amen. Okay? Amen. And uh, that's just common sense, folks. Let's just do it. And if somebody says something to you about not doing it, and you're not guilty, just ignore it. Don't get your nose all out of joint. Well, she said or he said or blah, blah, blah. just get over it. Grow up, okay? It's that simple. We've got to protect ourselves. And uh, the reason, again, I know some of you like to sit over there and some of you like to sit over there and some of you don't like what I did here. Get over it. Just get over it. I want you sitting in the middle section. Get over it. And I'm doing that not because I'm trying to be mean. Folks, they're shooting and killing people all over the country in churches. And I'm doing the best I know how as the chief security here over Will, over everybody else to do what I think is wise. And I believe the Lord told me it was wise for us to all sit here. Just like I believe it was wise for the Lord to tell me to get a gun so I can help protect you. And uh, so uh, if we have rules and regulations that are irritating, just get over it. Just get over it. You're grown men and women. Well, some of you aren't grown. A little kid isn't. But uh, what... I'm saying is you're grown up enough. In fact, the matter is, first thing, I was yelling at somebody, and first thing that little old boy said, well, what can I do to help? Can I go out there and pick up trash? Nobody had to tell him to do that. He just volunteered to do it. And I'm not bragging on him as much as just to say, we're all in this together, folks. This is family. This is family. And we've got a lot of family issues to fight. Let's fight them in the name of Jesus, and let's work together. So please abide by the rules. You know, don't leave oil sitting around in the kitchen. Even I know that's dangerous. <laughs> and so let's, uh, let's work together and uh, cooperate together. All right, anybody got any questions, comments, any more, Will, anything else? All right. I think everybody knows. And again, if... Uh, you know, we're trying to keep the doors locked. We're trying to do things. And uh, I'm the world's worst leaving doors open. <laughs> but uh, let's just work together and protect one another and uh, continue to serve the Lord. And please let us know if you see somebody that you think ought not be here. You can look around here right now, and even if you're new, you know you recognize most of these people. But if a stranger came in, you'd know it. Don't make an issue of it with a stranger but come to me or Charlie or Will or somebody and say hey I, who is that guy who is that guy so let's work together okay anything else anybody has before we dismiss yes ma'am
Your grandma? All right, she's back in Texas. All right, Grandma, back in Texas. Father, we lift up this Grandma in Texas, and we ask that you'd help her to feel better, help her to know that we're praying for her. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, Carol. She's a non and right now she's in extreme pain. Mm. Mm, okay. That's right. Amen. Dr. Jesus will bring healing. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yes. Brendan. Grandma, thank you for sharing that. And tell, tell Grandma he asked for prayer for her in church tonight, will you? Grandma, appreciate that. You know why I know grandmas appreciate that kind of thing? Because I'm a great grandpa. And I love it when my kids say, one of their kids prayed for great grandpa. And uh, anybody else have anything they want to share? All right, stand together. Turn to somebody on your left and say, God loves you and I love you. And now turn to the right and say, I love you and God loves you. Amen. And if y'all have any questions about anything, don't hesitate to ask me. I'm here a lot and uh, want to pray with you, pray for you. All right, let's bow our heads in prayer and be dismissed. I want to keep this in the family. I want Charlie to dismiss us in prayer. Father, Lord, we come to you with our heads bowed, Lord. Give thanks for Wally and everything and a place like this to provide for people that is in need. And everything, Lord, we just come to you and, and say thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good night. God bless. And tell Jesus you love him. Amen.